So this is me, Mike Bowen, and it's been about three weeks since I've hung out with my best friends, Mark and Patrick, which means I've had to moderate the things I say and to moderate the things I do because I'm mostly with strangers and the women in my family. And that means I've only got to share what's on my mind with me and my readers somewhat because everything that comes out through my writing to my readers is distilled. And sometimes the formations of those thoughts are still in the text and sometimes they're not. <clears throat> but just rubbing stuff off of other people's skin is not part so much of the way I write anymore. <clears throat> and I, I need my, my friends. So I'm dealing with more shit than usual. I am just taking my last Paxlovid dose for COVID that I picked up in South Dakota last week. And I thought it was mold. The mold in my brother's houses. Uh, we have um, one house and a couple ramshackles, <laughs> one of which is condemned. Uh, on a good size, a good chunk of property. Um, it's, it's most of a block. And uh, you have to mow it with a riding mower. And my two, uh, my niece and my nephew are, are there uh, holding things together. <coughs> but it's going to take a lot to rescue all that stuff if it happens at all. Um, so we have haunted houses. I spent time with my mother and, uh, I think it takes two days for her to revert <laughs> to her to her manic uh, properties. Uh, I don't know how. I, I mean, I'm not trying to cure her of her weaknesses, but um, now I know how long I can stay with her. Um, I got back on the bike. It's been a while, but I did, um, my new diet is coming along very well. I'm down to 188. I want to get to 185. I, I don't know that I can do that without a regular exercise. Which I couldn't do for the past couple weeks because I was on vacation and vacations are not about exercise. What I did successfully do this, this vacation is empty my mind completely. Um, just being in lonely, desolate places that have a certain kind of beauty uh, appreciated from afar. Uh, but every place you go, either you have a story in mind or you have a guide, a person who tells you this is what to notice. And it was very odd having a guide in my mother to notice what she notices about the place she's been for the past 13 years. Um, <laughs> yeah, so what resonates to me are the questions unasked and that are not easily answered by someone who's there for the first time and not necessarily the, <clears throat> the profiles 
given to you by your guide or by the literature. So the planet is a lonely place and we look for places that are familiar. I'm noticing that because when I came home back here to Los Angeles, the sky was missing. I mean, it was, in the ancient Hebrew sense, a bowl of heaven, but it was impenetrable. There was the sun somewhere, but you couldn't see it. It was overcast. And the sky was blue, but it was a dingy, grayish kind of blue with hints of brown and orange. And you couldn't tell how many miles away you could see in that sky. And just the whole thing. I've experienced claustrophobia looking at the Los Angeles sky. And then even more claustrophobic is my walled garden, this gated community where I live that I love so much. And I love it because it makes me into a burrito baby. You know how infants love to be snuggled and wrapped tightly and kept warm and they can't move and their jerky movements don't make sense anyway. And I took a walk around the neighborhood and I watched people practicing their jump shots and walking their dogs and running out of their cars after work like they have to go to the bathroom, but their water bottles and their backpacks are jiggling as they run across the street. And everything is in our little circle. And I looked at the cars and the cars are all alike in that they're these very precious investments that are supposed to express something about us. And people who are happy with their cars are burrito babies too. And I just think about what it's like to live under this domed sky with our little miniature movements around our community of 300 houses. And we're all kind of clockwork mechanisms. And that is the part that's satisfying, that's familiar. It's our league, it's our place, it's our burrito, and we fill it up. And it's, we discipline ourselves to get into this placid place, like, like a dog walking around in circles before he pees, just to make sure. And our environment is, is safe and close. And it's what we want. And we fulfill that desire to want to be home. And that's what it's like. When I walked in my door, it was all my stuff. And I've gotten to the point where I'm a collector. I have more, I have all the material things that I've ever desired, except for the Porsche. But I rationalized my way away from that Porsche. <coughs> Recently, and that's why I have the piano. Because I decided well, I reasoned it out that if I lived my entire life without having driven my own Porsche, would I be happier than if I lived my entire life without learning how to play piano? And by a long shot, I would have rather learned to play piano. And my learning is going slowly because as I've complained before, I have so many things to do. I'm so busy. I, I'll never finish all the things that I wanted to do. And I'm, I'm, I'm adjusted to that. I will never finish writing all the books that I want. I'll never finish writing all the essays that I want. I'll never 
recode all of the programs that I've written in my new favorite language. I'll never do a lot of things. I'll probably never run a 10 minute mile unless I get my knee fixed. And I don't think I'll be able to get my knee fixed. But I'm looking at my life and I'm happy with it. I'm satisfied with it. I'm comfortable in it, which I should be. This morning, I woke up at about six, but it was still dark and my lights come on at 7.30. My alarm goes off at seven. So most of the time I can laze around in bed and see what email I've gotten. But this time I just went to pee at six and then I came back stumbling through the darkness to my bed. And I had started a jazz station on my phone. And now I could hear the music. And I identified like three songs in a row. One that really freaked me out was Hocus Pocus by Lee Morgan. And I'm listening to it and I don't know the song, but then it just sounds exactly like the Joy Spring. I'm listening to the improvisations and Hocus Pocus and the Joy Spring are pretty much the same song once you get past the primary melody and into the improvisation. And I was interested to notice that. And then there was another one which turned out to be God Bless the Child by Sonny Rollins. And I recognized what that was too. And there was a third song that I forget at this moment, but I thought it was awfully clever in that waking dream state that I had this deep repository of cultural knowledge. And I remembered it's because I love standards. And when I started listening to jazz, that was the best advice which is listen to the standards and then what has basically happened is I have the infinite improvisation of jazz which are based on those standards that are always recognizable and so you have the best of both worlds you have the burrito baby rap comfortable you know the set phrase you know the key you know the melody of the standard. And then you get the infinite sky of improvisation where it's boundless. And you're, you remark about how the clouds are never in the same position. So that's the latest insight for this Sunday morning. And I listen to um, the guy I like, the Scotchman. I think he's Scott Scottish, and he reads a poem every Sunday. And the Abbey of Misrule is back, and Kings North is writing about hermits and holy wells. And now that I've emptied my mind, I'm going to try to reduce the number of things that I let into it. Because coming up are some difficult things that I'm going to have to deal with. I have to do taxes for myself, for my nonprofit, and for my father all in October or else. And then there's a new regime at work which requires different discipline and different accountability, different priorities. 
Uh, but at least I'm over my illness for the most part. I don't know how long I have to keep isolating myself. And I've gotten over my addiction to Starfield. It's, it remains interesting, but not so compelling that I need to play every day. So I'm going to finish washing the last of my clothes from my vacation, which I returned <laughs> a week ago today. Uh, I'm going to finish washing my comforter. I've changed my linen, rearrange my shoes, and get ready to put some more long sleeve shirts into rotation because it's starting to feel like an actual September. <laughs> Haven't used the air conditioner all week, and I was sweating earlier this week because, you know, you don't want to spread COVID through the HVAC system. Things are good. Things are good enough. There's more to do. I have to write an AI paper. And it was pleasant to hear David Brooks tell Sam Harris that he's been writing one for eight months and he hasn't figured it out yet. And it's true. Nobody's figured it out. We're all just throwing out our best guesses right now. Even my company. And I'm in the AI and analytics division. We don't know everything that we're going to do. It's change. <laughs> yeah, it's change. Well, you all take care of yourselves. <laughs>